You can explore the dependency graph to see both packages you depend on as well as repos that depend on you. Let's see how that works. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and in this video, we are going to explore the dependency graph a little to see what we can learn. As I mentioned before, the dependency graph will show you both packages your code depends on as well as repositories that depend on your code. Let's get to it. We're back in the same repository, the Supply Chain Security Demo repository that we used in the introduction video where we turned on dependency graph. Dependency graph's been turned on, it's done its analysis, so now let's see what we can see. If I go to the Insights tab and I select Dependency Graph, we can see that it has found a lot of things that my code is dependent on. In this package lock.json, it's found over a thousand dependencies and it lists out the first several and then I can load a hundred more at a time. In a different package.json, it found 34 more dependencies. And I can see that my workflows, CodeQL analysis workflow and this E2E -E test workflow, rely on these different actions as well. Now, one nice thing about the, dependent gra about the dependency graph is that I can drill down to see other things. For example, in this dependency, I can drill into that dependency to see what things that is dependent on. And then I can even drill down even further to see what packages Bluebird is dependent on. So all of these would be considered transitive dependencies, while this XVFB would be considered a direct dependency because it's defined directly in the lock file, while these are transitive because XF, XVFB uses these. And you can keep going, right? I mean, this will keep going until it gets all the way down to the very, you know, end node of each of these. So yes, while you could try to keep track of all your dependencies and your transitive dependencies yourself, as you can see right here, this becomes a monumental task without dependency graph. One other nice thing is I can hover over of dependency and it'll show me some information around that dependency, specifically around the repository where that dependency is located. Now I'm going to switch to a different repository. This is my get a dad joke action repository. So this is an action that I've created, but I wanted to show this to you because this shows you an example of a dependencies, meaning that my YAML file is dependent on my dad joke action. But if we also go to dependence, this shows me all the other repositories that are using my action right now. So I can see I've got seven repositories that it says are using my action. It's only listing six. So I'm thinking maybe one repository may not exist anymore. I'm not sure, or maybe it only shows, nope. I don't know what's going on there. That's interesting. I have to figure that out later. However, you can see though that I have all of these different repos that are relying on the action that is in this particular repo. So that shows you an example of both dependencies, things that I'm dependent on, as well as dependence, things that are dependent on my code. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of the dependency graph. If so, Please comment and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.